can also take them away. So, and it's sort of like a cycle. If if you break that that cycle or that circle, then you cut off your own blessing. So, through community, I believe that we not only bless others, but we we continue to allow God to bless us by helping others. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well. It comes a time in the show where I have to ask you to read one of the poems in the book. Okay. Um, just to give the viewing audience uh, a, just a little taste of what they can expect um, should they be lucky enough to get their hands on a copy of Music by Mitch. Okay. I'm going to read this poem called Alternate Reality. Okay, um, the poem, uh, the problem uh, with living in alternate reality is that it takes us out of the will of, of God as we exa- exalt ourselves and neglect the example that Christ set before us by his obedience unto death for a crime he didn't commit and a debt he didn't know. And uh, one day, one day I was just sitting up, and, and you know I have to be inspired to write, mm-hmm. and and the Holy Spirit, you know, just you know came over me, and and and, and these are the words that 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 that, that, that flowed onto the per, onto the paper. <clears throat> In my alternate reality, things are never as they seem. I'm the master of my destiny, even as I dream. Others may tell me that I'm wrong. But in my alternate reality, I only see them as weak and myself as strong. In my small corner of the universe, all that matters is how I feel. Your opinion is of little consequence and your concerns are no big deal. Some may perceive me as a controlling spirit. In my world, it makes little difference because I just plug my ears when I don't want to hear it. Others might see me as a demon of selfishness. Whatever. In my world, I'm the big tuner, and you're the little fish. So that's just one of my more lighter pieces. Man, sometimes I get, you know, I get. Uh, sometimes you get all intellectual, yeah, deep I get, yeah, I get, I want, and stuff, you know, and then you have to. I get deep, and and you know, and, and, and you know, like I got to thinking about the war. I got to think about the war and, and what was going on over in, in. in, in Iraq, and I came up with this piece. So you think you're hard, and 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 it was really a, you know, I, I was just so upset with the some of the stances that our our government is taking our, on our government and our, some of our political leaders were taking, and it's almost like we were isolating ourselves, you know from the rest of the world. And so I came up with this piece called So You Think You're Hard, So You Think You're Hard, and it goes like this. So, you think you're hard. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. You're not hard until you can make the difficult choices. You're not hard until you can not stand alone, but in harmony with the world community. You're not hard until you can humble yourself and esteem others who may be more worthy than yourself. You're not hard until you can place human life above vain glory and fight tyranny in defense of justice for free. Free. Here. Yeah. <laughs> I said free. You're not hard until you can bear the lonely solitude that comes with charting a new path that others may not can see. You see? Because hardness, it requires defying old traditions that hide behind the facade cloaked in the sky resembling diplomacy. Or you're not hard until you can care and strive to remove wars, agony, and despair. So, you want to be hard? Go ahead, be hard, but trumpet the call to arms as you tread waters in the poisonous moats filled with demons of heartache and pain. Oh, cry out as you lament the injustices of past, present, and future regimes, even as some seem to prosper from playing that old political game. Oh, the price paid, it exceeds the cost of a legacy lost or a tarnished presidential name. Please, please, 
Don't allow our fallen leaders' lives to have been in vain. Oh, the task is indeed daunting. And at this point, loss, well, loss is just not an option. So let's continue to vote and pray, oh, pray that our future leaders use better wisdom and a lot, lot more cost. Wow. So that okay. was kind of a, you know, I, I was kind of angry about the whole situation of our boys coming back in body bags and, you know. And a lot of times when I, when, even when I recite that, my, you know, my voice starts to tremble and I get angry sometimes just at the thought of loss of life. And, and sometimes all it seems that our leaders are concerned about is trying to profit. Right. You know. And, well, we, yeah. um, we want to take a, just a brief minute. You've got some very um, compelling words in your dedication of this book. And we want to to take a minute and talk about that and the foundation that you'd like to start that that is mentioned um, that you've mentioned before and is in, is mentioned in the dedication of your book. All right, uh, there are oh, I'm trying to find it right quick. Maybe I should well, go. While you're looking for it, um, just because I happen to know a little bit about it, um, okay. y you've dedicated your book to uh, okay. Evan Foster, right. uh, who is my cousin, and he is will be 10 shortly, and is battling cancer. And as a result of um, this book, some of the proceeds will go to um, the Evan Foster Foundation, exactly. which, which has multiple goals. Can you talk a little bit about that? Okay. Well, Evan was very instrumental in me even writing this book. Um, he is only nine years old. And I think he's probably, at his age, he's probably had more operations than he has birthdays. And he's a very strong young man. I mean, he's very... Uh, you know, he's very inspirational because even after all he's gone through, you know, he still seems to be a, a lot of times more concerned about, you know, little things that may happen to you right. uh, than he is about his own condition. Now, he has his moments, just like most, most, you know, most children, you know. Sometimes he gets depressed and he gets angry and, you know, he says, well, it's not fair. They... Why, why do they get to do this and, and I can't? And then you have to explain to him, well, you know, you're special, you know, you, you know, you know, you know, you, you know sometimes he just doesn't understand that right. you're doing it to protect him, you know, because his immune system is maybe weaker than, 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 than theirs is, but he can't, he can't really grasp that. Right. But anyway, he, he still takes it in stride. And, and, and I'm just going to read a little of this, this, this dedication. It says, this book is dedicated to my nephew, Evan Roy Foster. There are very few true heroes around as I define hero in today's society. In my opinion, a true hero is not determined by the number of home runs, touchdowns, hit movies, or top 10 recordings that one may produce. A person must be endowed with character that defies the normal scope a range of human potential and courage in order to read as a true hero in my book. Wow, that's yeah. not much can be said about that other than we pray for his health. Again, I'm Lonnie Ferguson. When people come together for the good of the community, even if they're only typing their poetry one finger at a time, they're on Common Ground. Thanks for watching.
Are you interested in helping your community? Are you concerned about the homeless, literacy, or other community needs? Would you consider mentoring a young person, helping an older adult, or planting a garden? Then you're a perfect candidate to volunteer here. It's a web page designed to match your time, talent, and interests with a variety of volunteer opportunities right here in your community. Just visit www.volhere.org and enjoy a rewarding time doing what you do best. A service of the Resource Center.